few months ago, my five-year-old daughter was in a sassy mood and started breaking stuff. After several of my sternest warnings, I sent her to her room for timeout. I heard her fuming in there. I have to get rid of daddy, she told one of her dolls. But how? And I smiled, thinking that was pretty cute in a way. I knew we'd be snuggled up together in no time. But what she's been up to these last few days? Not cute at all. I'm a single father with my finances stretched to the breaking point. I don't have health insurance. I've been having to dress my wounds myself, and I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm starting to ooze with infection. Ever since school closed down in mid-March, I've been working from home while also watching my daughter. There's been nowhere else for her to go. I do my best as a parent, but have you ever tried to work out a line of complex, esoteric code on a deadline, while a five-year-old girl says, Daddy, 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 look, Daddy, look, over and over again until you do look, only to see that she's dipped a Barbie doll head first in an admixture of purple sparkles and McDonald's pancake syrup and smeared it all over the couch? There are two types of people in this world, those like me, who have experienced just that, and those who sip on lemonade while writing articles about how excessive screen time is bad for children. At least, that's how I always used to think about it. I'll admit I've been having second thoughts lately. That's all to say that over the past several months, my daughter has been watching a crap load of YouTube videos. I'm not totally negligent though. I had all of the parental controls activated and all that, Plus, I'd take the child outside to the park or whatever, whenever I could. But sure, she watched a lot of videos, and I admit that I wasn't always on top of what she was watching. I didn't feel the need to review every toy review or hijinks video or cartoon that she clicked on. Sometimes I'd catch a snippet of something a little objectionable and would tell her to watch something else. After huffing about it a bit, she would. But Kill Daddy is a different story. God, I wish she'd never watch that dang video. It was a Friday, and I was having an unusually productive day. As soon as I realized how much work I'd gotten done, I knew something was wrong. I looked around the living room and saw that Kylie was nowhere in sight. I stood up and walked down the hall. Her bedroom door was closed, and it was awfully quiet in there, which meant, without a doubt, that she was doing something she wasn't supposed to. I tried to open the door, but it was locked. Come on, kiddo, you know you're not supposed to lock the door, I reminded myself, probably for the 60th time, to replace that doorknob with one that didn't lock, in case I ever needed to get in there during an emergency. Go away, said Kylie. I had visions of walls covered in pen scribbles, of headless dolls, of water overflowing from her bathroom sink. Open the door now. My daughter didn't dignify my command with so much as a scoff. All right, I said. I'm going to get the screwdriver, and if I have to use that screwdriver, you're going to be in big trouble. I waited a beat, hoping that the threat would be enough for her to open the door, but it wasn't. I sighed, got the screwdriver, and spent ten minutes messing around with the knob, cursing quietly before I finally got it unlocked. I threw the door open with a dramatic flourish, putting on my best angry dad face. My efforts were wasted. Kylie didn't even look up. She was sitting on her bed, watching a video. I felt foolish for a moment. That's all she was doing? Watching a video? But then, why'd she lock the door? I walked over and snatched my phone from her hands. There on the screen was somebody dressed up in a giant baby outfit, complete with diapers and pacifiers, stabbing another man with a massive knife again and again and again. The act looked sickeningly real. A pool of blood was forming on the floor where the man, who was clearly already dead, lay. Every now and then the screen would flash red, and on top of it all, in a growl so low that it took me a moment to realize what was being said, kill daddy, kill daddy, kill daddy. Give it back, said Kylie in a flat demanding tone. I've always tried not to swear in front of my daughter, but this was one of those times where it came out anyway. What the hell is this? Give it back. You are not allowed to watch stuff like this. You know that. Give it back. Now. Not only am I not giving it back, but you're not going to watch any videos all weekend. 
I knew that meant that she'd be on my case all the time until the punishment was over, but man, that video, I, it was still playing, kill daddy, kill daddy, kill daddy. I slammed my finger on the power button and turned off the phone. Meanwhile, I continued, you were to stay in your room for one hour and think about what happens when you don't follow the rules. I started to walk out of the room. Kill daddy, she said. I slammed the door shut on my way out. I went straight to the fridge for a beer. I needed it to calm my nerves and settle my stomach. After I'd chugged an entire can down, I turned my phone back on, intending to report the video as inappropriate, but I saw that someone had beaten me to the punch, and the video had already been removed. That wasn't enough as far as I was concerned. I took a screenshot of the URL and started typing out an angry email. I didn't know who I was going to send it to. No actual humans at YouTube would ever look at it. And even if they did, I didn't know what else they could do besides shut down the channel, which had already happened. The FBI? That sounded right to me. This was some FBI level stuff. That man had looked dead for real. I was deep into the email, so I didn't hear Kylie open her door, and I didn't hear her creeping up behind me. The first I was aware of her presence was after she had jammed a pair of scissors into the back of my leg. Then I howled out in surprise at the sudden pain and turned to face my assailant. The sight of my daughter standing there, glaring at me with a stone-cold face, made me feel several things at once. Shock, anger, horror, and betrayal. But those all melted together into something more tender when Kylie fell to her knees and started bawling. I'm sorry, Daddy, she wailed. I didn't want to. The video told me to. I'm sorry I watched it, and I'm sorry I hurt you. I took the rest of the day off and we went out for ice cream together. I'd never seen Kylie so upset and I was no longer angry at her at the least. I was angry at whatever monster I'd made that video and uploaded it to YouTube. Kylie said she hadn't clicked on it or anything. It'd come up on an autoplay after a Peppa Pig video. By the end of the day we were both exhausted, but I was feeling like things could go back to normal. Maybe I'd have to shell out for a couple of therapy sessions for her to hash out what she'd seen with a professional, or maybe not. At bedtime, she seemed more or less back to her old self. Daddy, can I sleep with you tonight? Even that wasn't unusual, since she asked to sleep with me every night, and while most of the time I made her go into her own room, which she invariably snuck out of in the middle of the night anyway, sometimes we'd do a sleepover. And if anything warranted a sleepover, it was that video. Sure thing, kiddo. I read to her, from the most wholesome, gushy books we had, until she fell asleep. I laid there for a long time, fuming about the video, working myself into a frenzy. I imagined finding the guy who'd made it, and beating the crap out of him. Finally, I wore myself out and went to sleep. Around midnight. About an hour later... I was awakened as my daughter tore a chunk out of my neck with her teeth. Try to kill me twice. Shame on you. Try to kill me three times. By the next afternoon, I had once again convinced myself that things were back to normal. Kylie said that she'd been having a nightmare and didn't even know that she'd attacked me until my screams woke her up. We spent the morning playing Legos and laughing. She was very affectionate and kept apologizing for attacking me twice. I told her not to worry about it, just don't do it again. In the afternoon, I decided to get caught up on the work I'd missed the day before. I got into the groove, but also made sure that I checked up on Kylie more than usual. A few hours into my work, Kylie announced that she was hungry. Pasta in the fridge, I said. That okay? Yeah. I heard Kylie open the fridge, but she didn't close it right away. Bottom shelf, I think, sweetie, I said, half turning my head. An instant later, a jar of pickles went hurling past my nose with incredible speed and shattered against the wall, spraying pickle juice and shards of glass all over me. Kill daddy, my daughter screamed, holding up a steak knife and running in my direction. That was when her attempts to kill me really began in earnest. I know I've been a little flippant while writing this, but that's just a coping mechanism, at least according to my ex-wife. The truth is that I'm scared. I'm typing with nine fingers right now. Kylie hid the tenth one somewhere. 
The wound on my neck is starting to turn green. I've hardly had time to think. I've been busy putting out fires, metaphorically but also literal fires, set by my daughter in her effort to kill me. I've got her secured in her room for now. The door is held fast by four padlocks that I found in the garage, plus six two-by-fours that I screwed across the jam as extra security. She's not happy about it at all, but I think she's finally run out of things to smash, and she's bound to lose her voice at some point. She's been yelling, kill daddy, kill daddy for hours and hours. Maybe once her voice gives way and it's finally quiet, I'll be able to figure out what to do. I haven't slept very much in the past few days, so my mind is a little slow. Especially with those old painkillers I found sitting on top of it. Do I call 911 on my own daughter? Will they believe that a five-year-old is capable of multiple premeditated murder attempts? What will they do to her if they do believe me? Am I better off calling a priest? Please help. <laughs>